can start healing And you can show me how to live with our feeling Welcome to back to our challenge podcast we're fresh out of watching a Hanson concert. Well, Meg is fresh out of watching a Hanson concert. But at least we're giddy now after talking about Hanson. So maybe they are okay. Check them out. Check out the new music. It's good. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> well, we're actually going to be talking about two episodes. We missed episode three that aired right before Christmas. I guess we'll go ahead and start with that. I want to talk about first about Fessy revealing the whole secret that they get to see who everybody voted for. Was he forced into that because he picked Kyle or sh- should he have said anything? Uh, I mean, I, I think I, it's a good move for him being that it, it kind of backed up his move. So instead of people like looking down on him for turning his back on Kyle, he had a reason for it. So that move wasn't, I didn't think was the worst move for him to make. Yeah, it, it, Kyle, Kyle's a snake in general, so any ammunition you can use to get back at him, whether you're working with him or not, just to paint a target on him, you got to use. So I think I, I think he needed to, needed to tell everybody. They're going to find out anyways. That's why that's why I think he needed to tell everybody. I don't even I don't even think it has anything to do with Kyle. The fact is him and Anissa aren't gonna win every competition. Somebody else is about to go in there and they're gonna know and it's gonna get out. So you might as well just be the one to tell them before it does. Now I don't know if Kyle is a snake or a rat because he also ratted out Corey and Nelson during this whole confrontation with Fessy and Wes and I think Devin was in the room too. I don't know the episode was a couple weeks ago. But uh, any other thoughts on Kyle after this whole? Did he make himself look better? No, you know what? Props again to that dude. Just was it two or three episodes again ago? I'm just I like watching him compete. As dumb as he may be, when it comes down to it, he goes ball to balls to the wall and competes for his place there. So I got nothing bad to say about him. I already ate my crow with him, so he's, he's on my good side for now. I mean, I, I appreciated the fact he just came out and said what he said. Like, yeah, I voted with Wes. You know what? I don't like y'all group, and I'm going the other way. And I think while – I don't think it makes as many enemies as when he first did it. I initially thought it would alienate him from everybody that was targeting Wes, which was like the whole house. But I don't think it's going to have that much blowback on him. I think it's literally just maybe – Fessy's little click that is now gonna be be with him and everyone else is not really with them so I think it would have had more blowback had the following events not happened yeah you didn't see anything of him in the last episode so he's he made out good he did I did want to touch upon the challenge in episode three, which was a <laughs> injury that prone was awesome. challenge, but it was a great challenge on the truck. Got to wrestle him off. What uh, what stood out other than the injuries days? First off, great challenge. I mean, if you're going to put all this money into production and big explosives, I mean, you can't get any better than have having people fight to the death on top of a moving truck. That was fucking awesome. Um, and it just goes to show how dangerous it was because, you know, was it Nicole? Something it took out name? three people. Yeah. I mean, she legit dislocated her arm. It was an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. It was gruesome. I don't know what happened to Liv. I don't know if they ever said that what happened to her. But I love that competition. It was great. And was it the matchup? Was it Fessy and CT? Yeah. Is that who was matched up? That was great. Um, all the how how they matched everybody up and that was made for good entertainment. Was it three people or two? It was, two. Well, and... it was two, but Nelson. I don't know if they showed this, but Nelson dislocated a finger oh. in that competition. That another girl that got. I don't know. I have had a couple white claws. <laughs> I don't really yeah. remember I'll... episode three very well. <laughs> I'll I'll bring up his finger again because it it 
it was used against him in the whole brawl. That was a dangerous competition, though. If if they had gone the wrong way off that truck, because there were only nets on the two sides, and when you get some big people like that trying to throw each other around, something could have gone very wrong with that challenge. Yeah. I was looking, trying to look closely to like see how high up that back went. I mean, because guys like Fessy and Kyle yeah. are over six foot tall. It wasn't that big. NCT. That's what so, I mean. If you went off the direct back or the direct front of that truck and not where the nets were, <laughs> you won't be feeling it. People fell into the nets and broke shit. So, right. Exactly. I think I think overall with that challenge, though, like there was some really good performances. I feel like everybody was scrappy. Yeah, it was, it was how like who won each matchup though when they were like both fall into the net because were they going off of like who was the first one to touch the net or who well, was, was the, the first the last person on top, which is like last person with something ball train. Yeah, toe tap. Yeah. Okay. Also, I guess Nicole's kind of injury prone. Poor thing. I think she's uh, not looking great for her. She's a firefighter. I figured she like. I mean, I don't know if I want her putting the fire out on my house. Firefighting. Yeah. (laughs) She's also scrappy though. She puts everything into every competition. You can tell, like every physical competition, she's all in. And I don't know if you can say that about every person on the cast. Like, she is literally putting everything she has into every challenge. And I respect that a lot of Nicole for that. I like Nicole. I mean, I can't, I don't really like her accent, but she does. <laughs> like, I like her. Uh, speaking, speaking of the accent, Devin just roasting <laughs> her all episode long for her, for her accent. I loved it. Also, fan guy, shout out to Leo, who was actually using some amateur wrestling moves in that against Darrell. He was scrappy as well. I mean, then that's a big size difference there. Yeah, Darrell <laughs> is a big, big man, and Leo is a small, small man. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's going to be, for a smaller dude, he's going to hold up with anyone. In the end, it was Casey and Leroy who won. Not surprising. I mean... Leroy is also a very big man. Um, and Casey and plays Casey, football. So. Yeah. Not Who's surprised. Leroy, I don't remember. I remember Casey was up against a small girl, like one of the smaller girls, but I don't remember who Leroy was up against. Oh, was it? I bet it was. I think it was Michi. Yeah. I think it was Michi and Gabby. Uh, Casey was up against Gabby. Well, I guess. Uh... The big thing, oh God, the whole argument between Josh and CT that started over food between Casey and CT. He's your boy, Days. What? What is wrong with Josh? He's he your boy, for real. I don't know if you remember the second podcast, but he was like for the first podcast. I, I, I. There's. Me- I haven't seen it, but I think there's some method to the madness in there somewhere. <laughs> But it, the fight, I think it was built up more than it should have been. Like, he didn't even end up fighting with CT. Didn't he end up fighting with... With Devin. Devin, Devin yeah. Yeah. With A times so, Norman. <laughs> screw, screw you, production, for throwing me for a loop, because I really thought him and CT were going to go head-to-head, and I was CT highly disappointed. too good to fight with Josh. He's too much of, like, a man to fight with somebody like Josh. No, he, he fights with Josh, but he does it so, like, under the radar, just things that Josh can't understand. Yeah, but he's not going to get in his face like Devin and, like, super egg him on and, like, drive him to, like, jumping off the edge. He used to. He used to. Yeah. He's grown. He's older and wiser. <laughs> he's a dad now. But as, as far as... I mean, okay, I admit it. Like, there's Josh is bad. He's a bad player. He shouldn't have won Big Brother. All right, is that what y'all wanted to hear me say? <laughs> but he is entertaining. He's entertaining. I love watching him. He's a giant man baby. Like I can imagine him in a diaper. Like 
playing a skit just standing there in an oversized diaper because that's really how he acts. See, like I hated him in Big Brother and I hate him now and I'm just never going to be a, a Josh fan. I think I said that in my like audition video or interview video for online survival is like, what players are you not going to get along with? And I was like, people like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see in the latest episode, like, again, there was some method to his madness, like him trying to pick a fight with Jay because his name was on the, on the radar of a lot of people. And he thought he was going to end up going against Nelson. So he was trying to pick a fight to get somebody else down in there. Like he's, it's a strategy. He's picking fights to make them a target. He's just not good at it. Well, I do want to mention the thing that actually set uh, Josh off with Devin was that he said Big Brother sucks days. And it's, you know, I think Josh might be the person that proves that these last several seasons of Big Brother might indeed suck. Well, okay, Devin, Devin is kind of right. Um, I would pay to see some of these players in the challenge go on Big Brother because I do think like their level of strategy and social ability is on another level than what we see from the majority of Big Brother players. Um, so I get where Devin's coming from when he says Big Brother sucks, um, but whatever, let's move on. No, I mean, I think you're combining two shows that are very different from each other. So you have this group of Big Brother players who have played a very different type of game where they had to be more strategic or mentally um, manipulative and not it's not as physically challenging. The challenge is, is more of the strategy when it comes to vote and physical challenges and do we go this way assuming that it's going to be this kind of challenge I mean that's more where their game lies so it's two completely different plays I, and the fact that there's I, so many returning players on the challenge means these people have had a lot of years to season and hone their game whereas a lot of people going into the big brother house it's their first experience with something like that and quite frankly I'm going to blame it on casting that's what I think of big brother casting sorry I'm never going to get cast I don't care you guys suck Y'all need to get all kinds of new, bright, different kind of real personalities in there and stop focusing on who you think can get you the most Instagram followers. Rant over. Sorry. But the talent players also, like you said, they're seasoned, right? And they've done this multiple times. So they kind of know how to play. They've built relationships so much outside of the game. And they have a lot of history and baggage with these people, whereas the Big Brother players may or may not have played with each other. So they're going to team up because they were on the same show, but they, they don't know each other. Like the they came necessity. The fact is the challenge has always been, or for the past, how many ever many seasons I've watched the past 20 or whatever, it's generally the veterans go after the rookies. Well, it just so happens that this season, the rookies are saying, yo, we've seen what's happened all these other seasons. And we actually have the numbers to maybe do something about it. Well, and not only that, but they have veterans who haven't had a chance to get to the final helping them do that. Well, um, what were your thoughts on Casey and Leroy's nomination? I forgot who they even nominated. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I believe they nominated... Devin and Nicole. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because Devin went against Wes. Uh, I mean, it's not – wait, was – they nommed him in? Who did the House vote in, Wes? No, the House voted in Devin and Nicole because oh, – okay. right? I mean, if from a House perspective, I mean, Devin is dangerous. He's really good. I mean, in the last episode, we saw what he can do. Like, he changes everything. He – Bear with me. He does a lot better when Bananas isn't there. His game is next level when when he's not focused on Bananas. And I think everybody else in that house knows that, that if you don't try to get him out, he's going to make it to the final probably. I mean, he's too cocky, though. It's like now that Bananas – and I mean, Bananas was never on. But without Bananas and without Wes – Devin has this mindset that he is just like the top fucking dog and everybody should look out for him and he's going to go to work and he's going to send you home. And like, I mean, it's too, I don't, I don't really care for Devin's personality, but I like watching him play. 
I like Devin. I think. Oh, go ahead. I mean, Devin's. I even said this on like last week or the week before. I think Devin behind Wes is probably one of the actually smartest people in the house. But he's um, a shitty person. Correct. He doesn't have any social intelligence or like he doesn't have any social or an emotional intelligence. He, he just has, you know, he's a very smart cat. But what I was kind of shrugging to what Dave said was, and I'm a big Devin fan. And I think Wes was checked out. I don't think Devin normally beats Wes at that challenge. I don't think Devin normally beats a lot of these guys at a lot of the elimination challenges. And I'll just leave it at that. I think Devin's a pretty easy target. For I mean, I just think Wes is getting a bit C2 like and starting to not exactly. be as great in challenges. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say that too. Did Devin really show what he can do in episode three or did Wes just crap out and allow Devin to win? I, I think Wes was defeated, like kind of on his own. And he just, he had no other options. And it's hard when you're that big of a target, like you just have to, you have to have a string of luck to really get out of it. And I think he knew that. And, you know, Leroy and Cam have been gunning for Wes and they did kind of have control a little bit over the house vote. And Wes and Devin are like allies. They're friends in real life. So I think a part of that played into it too. Like not only did I get thrown in and I have no other allies, but it was against somebody that I'm actually kind of close to. So this is just a shitty situation to be in. I mean, I think that's the biggest piece is that he was against his friend because Wes a couple of years ago, I mean, Wes has always been a target. He's always had to have this string of luck to like bring him back up and he's always succeeded at that. So I just don't think that he was fully in it this round and being put up against his strongest ally just dug his grave. I agree with Nick and Wes just seemed jaded like he did. He just seemed kind of like, because Wes a few years ago would have gone, you know what? I'm going to go into every elimination. I'm going to beat you. Then I'm going to beat you. Then I'm going to beat you. And that's how it's going to go. And, and he would have done it. Yeah. And he would have at least given it hell. Mm-hmm. Um, and going into this one, you could see he was defeated completely. He was just like, I don't, I, I, I know it's going to be me in every single elimination challenge. And he just didn't have that fire inside of him that he had in the past. And so Wes checked out on himself completely. Devin didn't. Also, also feel like it, the more they bring in new players from these other types of shows, like the game is starting to evolve. You no longer see like these huge alliances of, you know, like the real world people versus, you know, whatever. And I don't think Wes has evolved with the game. And I think he's kind of struggling to figure out what moves to make. He can't rely on how he used to play and he's still trying to. I just think this was the wrong concoction for him. This cast, there was just too many people who know how he plays. They just weren't going to let him get that footing because Wes is that dude who just, he's going to skate by because everybody's just just okay enough with him every season where he gets by. And I think this season, everybody's like, nah, you've won. They're targeting all the winners for sure. So he was, you know, he was, he already was in the short end of the stick because of that. But one of Wes's biggest strategies over the years has been to, ally with the rookies sometimes so I mean, if they're all against him i guess he's pretty fucked i would 100 percent ally with wes 100 percent. that would be the first person that I'd go to i mean yeah i mean i like aligning with a big target just because they'll be you know they'll be wes is never going to turn on you till he absolutely has to mm-hmm. and he'll train you he'll teach you well after all this after Devin's win he shakes things up and chooses Tori as a partner thoughts on that fan guy they hate each other they actually don't like each other in real life so this is a very interesting pairing on so many levels uh, I couldn't possibly get into Devin's head to know exactly how you know because you don't get to see everything so I know there's a lot of um, political ongoings in the house that we aren't aware of so I'm sure that this was a calculated move, a very calculated move for Devin, because that's he is just a deep thinker like that. Um, I, off the top of my head, don't don't see it. I mean, do you feel like it's a 
they're gonna target me. They're gonna have to target Tari too. So you know, like get in yeah. good with Anisha and Fest. Yeah, and she and Tori's and look, it's a duo competitions. Tori is easily one of the top two girls in my mind. Her and Lolo are probably a step. Her and Lolo and maybe Natalie are a step ahead of the rest of the girls. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's got a great partner to win immunities with and have some control as we, sorry for spoiler alert, are about to see. I mean, yeah, I think it, he's it, the only one who's really using this like choose your own partner kind of thing in a strategic way instead of just partnering up with your friend. He's using, he's partnering up with somebody that in his mind is either going to keep him out of eliminations or keep a target off of his back, you know? Yeah, it, it works both ways. I mean, you have a great competitor alongside you to help you win challenges, but, you know, he didn't really have anybody to go to, and this moved him into a situation where you can't go after him unless you go after your own ally also, since you don't know whether it's going to be a girl's or guy's day or whatever. So great move on his part. I, I don't know if I would have thought about it like that. I probably would have just tried to get the strongest player I could have instead of thinking at the about the protect, protection standpoint of it. But how deep is Tori in? That's my question. Like how how deep is is she in with the rest of the house? Because I don't know. She is, I know that she's that. I feel like she's in with Fessy and Corey, but I don't feel like she's necessarily in with Leroy and Cam's squad. When Jordan isn't with her, she is more welcomed into several groups because she's. People like you know, Tori. Yeah, they, yeah, she's likable. Yeah. I, I think the fact that certain certain players aren't on this season has changed the dynamics of the game. Like, no Jordan, no Bananas. It really makes a big difference with how other people have to play the game because those are huge targets that aren't there. And with Wessa, that leaves Natalie with Corey maybe giving her some relief of being a target dazed. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of worked great for both of them because, yes, Wes isn't attached to her, and now Corey actually has some intelligence on his side. Yeah, the intelligence that does, that's never played the challenge. Like, she doesn't really know about the politics of the challenge. He does her way more favors than she does him. Like, she actually has an in with a semi-alliance now. I don't think she did him any favors, but he being with him does her a lot of favors. We will go into episode four. I guess we'll start with Devin, Meg. You mentioned earlier about his ego. I'm just all around. I feel like he's just putting this huge target on himself now. I mean, he. I guess he was already a target, so why not make yourself a bigger target? Is that his strategy? Um, yeah, like a love to hate me kind of thing. I honestly put him up on my list this week. I mean, I think um, because some other players fell really far down, I think Devin went up. And I think if this next round, um, he can maybe fall a little quieter and let what happened this episode, like, just carry on. He's in a good spot. I mean, him and Tori together, if they can work together like they did in this challenge, I mean, they'll beast it. Yeah, he needs to pull a Kyle in the next week where, you know, just get the target off your back, lay low, and let this new feud and mayhem that's fixing to go down happen and just watch it. Enjoy the show from the oh, sideline. Oh, yeah. After what Sassy pulled, half of those people are not looking at Devin anymore. I guess I forgot to ask who went up and down for you this episode. Who went down for you this episode, Meg? Casey. Um, and Casey went down strictly because Bessie tied her to him. Um, so she shot down the furthest for me just because I feel like she was in a good spot and now she's not in a good spot at all. But, I mean, obviously Bessie went down just because of the way that he chose to play it. But I think in, you know, correlation to that, Casey went down too. It's who went up and down for you. Uh, I'm, I struggle with saying that Fessy's down because I just, I don't think there's anybody that's going to challenge him down in the crater. I think he's in a good position now. He's ready to run the final. 
but he just looks like a, a shitty person. And because of that, I have to put him down. I mean, um, like he was playing dirty. Remember when I said that Nelson hurt his finger? He was like putting his knee into his hand because he knew it. Like nobody else knew that Nelson was hurt except for Corey and Fessy. And that just, it kind of irked me the wrong way. So, and up. Eesh, um, I don't know. I think Devin's in a good spot, honestly. I mean, do you Corey really think, up. though, if it gets to the point where they're having to throw people in that have gold skulls, that they're not going to try to get Fessy out so that they don't have to run a challenge against him? He gassed in the final. I, do, uh, I have a hot take on Fessy, but we'll wait. Fan guy, who went He's, up and down for you? Um, so I actually think Casey went down, but for not the same reason Meg did. But it kind of connects to exactly what we were just talking about. I don't think anybody's going to fuck with Fessy for the rest of the season. So I don't even know if Casey's going to get a chance at this goal if her and Fessy's Ooh. team stays together. Um, and so I actually put her down because I think the probability of her going to get a skull because Fessy's not going to – we already saw. He, he went there. He did the most chicken shit thing possible. There's no way that dude's going to risk it being a guy's day if they don't know. There's no way. So whoever's with him, they're shit out of luck. And so I think Casey is going to be that person who arguably doesn't have a chance to get a skull. So I have her going down. Um, you guys have convinced me. I'm actually going to go ahead and say – Devin's up, but I actually, I don't know if I can say that because on that same token, I just said Tori is wants her skull. And the fact that we just saw, De you know, Devin talk her out of throwing herself down there, possibly um, that dynamic's going to come up because Tori's not going to let that happen. Tori well, will go. Good that he did, or else it would have been him in there. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to change one of my answers. Who do I think is up? I think Kyle's up because he has slid into the background after getting his gold skull, and he's no longer a target. He can just I sit Kyle back. Had a gold skull. He's a gold skull. <laughs> no. Yeah, he can just sit back and kind of guide, glide to the end. Don't make any waves, and you're in the final. Keep your eye on all the teams that have one gold star and one not gold star. Because that dynamic is going to get really interesting pretty soon, I think. Also, I think also put, put Kyle up because he called Fessy a pussy. And what he did was the epitome of that. Both weeks in a row. Chickening out of not going down there to get a skull. And then picking his best one of his best friends who he knew was injured to get his skull. What did he move? Nelson was never going to target Fessy. Like, oh. ever. Like ever. I mean, it is a million dollars, though. What did Nelson gave up and tried to give Corey a million dollars last season? Nelson is probably the last dude you should ever do that to. Yeah, you back. keep you keep him in the game if he is your ally all the way to the end. Because you know what kind of ally he is, and arguably you could say Fessy was his number two behind Corey, and he did him like that. That was. Oh, I felt so bad for him. Nelson is not I mean, the best uh, player, but like cut the guy, like throw him a bone. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget some of the shitty things that Nelson has done. Also, oh, he's done a pretty, things. <laughs> pretty despicable dude at some at some points. But last season and this season, it does kind of just hurt to see the way that he went out. Like it was brutal. I mean, two hall brawls in a row against two of the biggest dudes Who on the show. Who did last, last time? Rogan. Oh, yeah, we couldn't, uh, my husband and I couldn't remember who it was. But props to Nelson, because that, that dude is a dog, man. He fights, he, he's, he's, he doesn't punk out when it comes to, to eliminations like that. He wasn't even throwing a scene when he got picked. Like, it was like, that this is fucked up, but he didn't whine about it. He didn't complain about it. You didn't see him sitting there throwing a fit about it. It. I think he realized, like, right before the challenge, um, when they were talking to him, he said, this is going to be a long day. Like, he knew what was he was fixing to have to put his body through. And, I mean, props to him. I mean, you know, he was probably scared and 
but I don't know about scared, but anxious about what he was fixing to have to do. I think Nelson could have beat Josh. I'll just say it. I think Nelson could have beat Josh in a hall brawl. And Josh does significantly outsize Nelson. I'm going to put Josh and Fassie down because I feel like they both show that Big Brother is not a great uh, training ground for strategy these days because they are just burning bridges. I'm actually going to put Big CT up because CT is also going through the cracks and Big T has a very under the radar great social game. So I think they're I, both in. What could I be love best? those two together. Especially now that CT is older, he's just like this goofy dad, you know, that's just there to, you know, socialize, not really get fucked up, but just have a good time and be with people. And it goes so well with Big T. I was talking to my husband before I got on about who went up and who went down. He was like, CT went up. Tell him CT went up. Tell him CT went up. <laughs> he did. He did. You're right. How is Josh getting Jay's face? I mean, what is this? Like, what is, what? what? I don't know. Dave yeah, like said some elaborate reason why it and was. I don't think that's the reason why Dave, I'm sorry. I think it was just Josh was drunk and he got in his head no. that he can't trust him. And then he, the next day he had to hold true to it. I agree with Dave so, because, because Josh even made some comments about how it's going to be physical and I want to beat Jay. Like he said it like two or three times. First off, there's no doubt in my mind that every single person in that house knew it was going to be a guy's elimination. Everybody knew it was going to be one. Um, I'm I the way I understand it is whether Devin was actually going against Josh, which you know Josh makes shit up in his head and thinks people are coming after him. I think Josh truly did believe that Devin was coming after him and that he was going to be the the double agent's uh, choice to go down. So he was trying to get whomever he thought he could beat in a physical male elimination in there, and that was Jay. And that was yeah, the whole point. Why, why was Jay? It last season when Jay beat, like, he survived how many eliminations in a row? Like Jay is not going to beat Josh in something like a hall brawl. You never know. I mean, Jay came then, out with some crazy shit. I guess if it's speed, if he could outspeed him. But, um... Why Jay went not like someone like Michi or even Leo maybe? It's because they not, don't have a chance of getting put in, but I mean, I don't know. I just feel like he's he, burning a bridge with Jay. The target. Michi's the target for the record. Like that's gonna be the cakewalk guy, like for sure. I maybe there's something may, I thought they were actual friends. I guess I was wrong. Him and uh Jay. I mean, who knows? Who knows what the fuck Josh does? I'm still here to make up as many excuses for him as I can. So deal with it. There, There's, like, Jay's not the only layup in the house, right? So if he's friends with everybody else that you're aligned with, why not lay off him? And like you said, Van Gogh or Nick, go after somebody like Michi, who isn't aligned with anybody, and he's also and probably a better one because we've seen what Jay can do. I, I feel for him sometimes because he does, much like myself, he gets very paranoid that even people that are close to you are coming after you and you got to make some move to get out of it. It's not logical. Okay. I get it. But I understand kind of the reasoning behind it. I've been there. <laughs> You can tell that Jay is friends with him because the whole time he's doing that to Jay, Jay didn't pop off on him for a while. Jay's just looking at Casey going, what's wrong with this dude? He's fucking crazy. He's my friend. Why is he acting this way? That was Jay's reaction. Jay wasn't even like, Josh, get out of my face at first. Like he was just like, what's going on? Like, why is he doing this? So Josh is just off the rocker, man. How? I mean, how does Casey deal with it? Because she seems pretty apt about putting up with his you know i think she's just a chill low-key person so i guess she's able to deal with it and she knows he's I mean, loyal to her and i think in these games if you know you have somebody that is a hundred percent loyal to you that's really hard to find even if they are he's mental not me is it chill and she loves him i yeah, take that back really Nani told him to shut up life. they like go and drink and party together in real life and it's just like to me, it seems like such an unlikely duo. 
bunch of drunks. Anyway, um, like we should talk about the challenge because I think Tori and Devin deserve a lot of credit for winning this drone challenge that everybody else sucked at. And it was a hard-ass challenge. This, another favorite challenge of mine. I like how they're really stepping out of the box. It was very creative. Doing different stuff. Like, it was... I wouldn't have been able to do that. First off, I wouldn't have been able to fly the drone. Second of all, I wouldn't have been able to remember those numbers. So... Props to those two for actually completing it. I'm not surprised that they're the only ones that, I mean, I'm surprised that they actually completed it. I really thought it was, I was asking my husband, like, what happens when nobody completes it? Do they all get a second turn? Because you're literally flying blind in a cavern. Of course, you're going to run into a wall. (laughs) Like, that's inevitable. How do you not? I mean, I just want to say, Dave, this is kind of a crapshoot. If some of my challenges are crapshoots, this was definitely a crapshoot. You know, the first thing I thought of when I saw this challenge was that stupid helicopter game that we've had, that we've played. I'm like, this is the real life version of that. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck that game. (laughs) And it ends the same way it does for so many of us. (laughs) (laughs) Something something interesting in the challenge, I don't know if y'all caught this, but the whole dynamic between Nam and Lolo, I, I don't know why my mind went there, but I feel like this they edited this to be very sexual in nature. Like, this is what they would sound like if they hooked up, like trying to communicate with each other. Like, go back and watch the scene. That when I was watching go, go back and watch the scene, I promise. Because one, they're gonna hook up this season. They're gonna have beautiful babies. <laughs> Malolo wants to. Speaking of hooking up, any uh, any thoughts on Fassy and Gabby? That was awkward. Should be more um, like Fassy and Tori. Yeah, what's? I mean, I'm sure at least Nick and Fang guy have probably heard the rumors. What's what's up with what's up with that? Any. Inside details. Is that the rumor? I just didn't know anything until this. There is photographical evidence, sir, of those two being off on several vacations together. (laughs) Really? Like her and Jordan? Yeah. Are her and Jordan not together? They've called off their engagement. Tori has come out and publicly said that she did not cheat on Jordan during the filming of this season. So I actually, and Tori. Is, just strikes me as that type. Like, if she says that, I'm going to believe her and say that, that her and Fessy didn't start hooking up till after the season. So I don't think we're going to get to see that. On the who season. was it that took the dig at Tori? Was it last season or the season before about it takes a cheater to know one? Like Probably said Polly that or Karen. Oh, yeah. It was, it was Polly, Polly yeah, that it was said Polly. that to her. Because he was talking about uh, Derek and Derek H, I think. And then Kayla cheated on her dude of like four years in the, in the house last season too. Fair. But I mean, you don't like, is Tori, I mean, I don't know, man. But Corey did call it too. Corey said something this episode, like it ain't looking good for Jordan. Like he even said it. And it's sure enough, flash forward to now. And those two have been like on several world globe trotting expeditions. Oh, that's MTV I mean, for you. Apparently, Tori sees something, but, you know, ladies like Amber and all them were saying he ain't got no game, but. Yeah, but Jordan's kind of a piece of shit, too, and so is Fessy. So, I kind of. I see a huge piece of shit. I'd much rather spend my time with Fessy than Jordan. I see see her type for what it is right off top. She likes assholes. Both those guys are great assholes. We see Fessy's type, too, like the athletic, short, blonde that. Has and kind of a loud mouth. Pushovers in relationships. <laughs> yes. But the whole the Gabby the Gabby part, it was I don't know. I felt it. I felt awkward. It was awkward. Well, I guess we talked about it a lot, but I mean, Fessy in this hall, bro. My hot take is you guys are like everybody should be afraid of Fessy. I think Fessy's mediocre at challenges. This was his challenge to win and he was had to be played dirty to win it and that's, is he this great challenge beast i think you're is, that you think i is? think you're cutting nelson short i, I really mean yeah do. i think nelson put up a fight obviously he's no but i mean, 
the fact that Fessy had to eye gouge, which is illegal in every sport, is a bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he ripped off. Which they they really should have been in football helmets to begin with, not not those half face helmets they had last season and these motorcycle helmets this time. They need to be in full pads and helmet. Uh, but yeah, he played dirty. I don't know why he felt the need to do that. I don't know why he felt the need to even go after Nelson to begin with. There's going to be more physical comps. I just I I don't know what he's thinking. I think maybe maybe he feels like he came across as boring and not relatable to his followers last season and is trying to make a bigger name for himself. Maybe I, I don't know what's going on in that dude's head. He took it way too far. I'll trace it back to last week. for you, Dave. I think something All happened right. last week that, that made Fessy do that. I think last week people probably in that house were getting on him because he saw a fucking circle in the middle and it was clearly a physical competition. He had a chance to go get, get it last week. He didn't do it. Yep. I'm sure he called a lot of shit about that. And Kyle did call him a pussy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kyle called him exactly. out in the middle of the room. So you think it was an ego, like just an ego thing? Yeah, but why the dirty play? Yeah, you have an ego and you want to go down, you want to get your gold skull. I can respect that no matter who you're going against, you want your chance. Dude, but why body fair. slam him in the ground and eye gouge him and rip his face shield off and none of that is necessary because he's a piece of shit. You, <laughs> you you might not see it when you're watching it on TV, but that shit happens in football all the time. Like you get in a pile on the field and it is it is brutal. Yeah, but you're this is football. This is a freaking MTV. I mean, if it was it's the NHL, it would have been a penalty. I feel like maybe it should have been a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> it would have. But in reference, well, yeah, and- I do think – I think it's Fessy's size, Nick. I don't necessarily think it's his athletic prowess. I don't think MTV necessarily does the best job of showing just how ginormous that man is. He is a really giant dude, and nobody wants to – nobody's going to want to tangle with him on anything they think it, it's possible he gets their hands, yes. his hands on. I, I will say, though, production is really inconsistent with enforcing rules – and dishing out penalties, I mean, it really depends on who you are and whether you're a favorite of production on whether those things get called. But, but Fan Guy's right. Like, he's intimidating just his sheer size, and you don't really see that on TV. But he's, he's well, a douchebag. It's the same production that's having you wrestle, body wrestle other people on top of a speeding truck with no – <laughs> they did put him against yeah, but, the biggest dude in the house though so if you think their production's hands wasn't in those matches making a little bit they weren't going to put oh. fucking CT or Fessy against Lil Mishi and have him propelled oh. off the, the semi <laughs> <laughs> onto the runway <laughs> like, I'm just like picturing like you know <laughs> but it I will say that I again I agree with Fan Guy. Like he, I think he's in a good spot. Like I don't think people are gonna come after him. And maybe ultimately that's what he was thinking. Like get my gold skull now. Nobody's gonna be dumb enough to come back down in here with me. I think Corey and, might be. Uh, I, I, I think, think we'll have Corey to see these next tried, two episodes. Corey's protection and and relationship with Nelson might take get the better of him where he's like I want revenge against Fessy and I think I can beat him at this and he's I feel like he would he might actually take the shot well if they know it's a a guy's week and it's like not physical then yeah you're taking Fessy go down there and you see the globe of the earth and a bunch of puzzle pieces it's like oh Fessy it's your time buddy My my understanding, and if you don't want, it's not really a spoiler, but this goes back to Nelson's Instagram Live. It seems as though Corey isn't upset with Fessy going forward. So, surprising. Yeah, it's surprising. So do you think Fessy has burned as many bridges as they made it seem? Because, I mean, he picks Casey, and he's really just <laughs> fucking up a lot of things. I, he, he fucked Anissa, which really pissed me off. Um, because I do love Anissa. I wish she was 
like her old self when she didn't give a shit about anything and would have gone head to head with somebody like CT if she had to. But he really, he really did her dirty. I'm tired of seeing Anissa getting walked but all I don't over. But she knew that if given the opportunity, he was going to trade her in. I don't think that that was a huge surprise to her. Well, where does Fessy fall now with this hierarchy? I think he has his hands in a lot of cookie jars. I think he was towards the top, but can he still be? It, I mean, honestly, it really just depends on who throws another <laughs> next week. Like. I'm predicting he makes the final. I, I, I'm predicting right now. I don't think he touches the elimination floor again. And, and why not? Why not let him? We all know what the the final consists of. A lot he of running. Because he's did he quit last season? Did he quit or did he like fail and get eliminated? It was like a bit of both. He, he gassed out. He look. I get it. He's he's athletic and he's big, but he is good athletically in spurts of like ten seconds. Yeah, because I think Corey beat him in the final even. So I yeah. mean. He's not – in those sort of long endurance stuff, there's a lot of guys in the house that can beat Fessy. Kyle can beat him. Corey can beat him. I don't know what to think of Nam yet. Nam looks like he can beat him physically, but who knows? Um, but I know – and maybe probably Leroy too. Um, so, you know, who knows? But I don't think anybody's going to mess with him just out of fear. It goes back to just ruling by fear. Like nobody wants to mess with him. But that and could hurt Casey. Whoever – Whoever said it, it might have been fan guy that it, it might hurt Casey the most in all of this because she's never going to get a chance to go down there unless she happens to win, you know, be a, a double agent on a day that it's a girl's day. That's a and then even shot. even that comes down to how consistent they're making it, guys, girls, guys, girls. You know, I hope they throw in a double one of these times where it's a team. Oh element. yeah, you know, I, I, really I was hoping. Was it, or the other night was it this last episode? I was like, oh, oh yeah, double, Amber. Double. Amber would have been destroyed. How did they not know it was a guy's round though? Because you have Michi standing like rogue, right? You have to get yeah. rid of a guy to yeah. give him a partner. They're not going to get rid of a girl and have two rogue guys. Well, I, I said I was trying to figure out how this all went down because I think I said it in our last podcast that we should expect Fessy to be in the hall brawl. And we didn't know that Fessy was going to be in it until the end of the episode. So all this time, knowing, like, first seeing Michi, I was like, well, it's got to be a guy's elimination now. And then I see it's a hall brawl. I'm like, how the fuck does Fessy end up in this? Like, the whole dirt, the whole way that production has edited this has me thrown off completely. I wasn't expecting a hall brawl this early. I was super surprised to see that. It's only episode four. I mean, make, make all of them physical. I'd love to see every every one a physical challenge. I like when they throw in other things for people like Fessy to have to suck at it. <laughs> and Tori. Tori sucks at puzzles. When I think of physical challenges on the on the challenge, I always just think of the CT versus bananas where CT's just carrying him on his back. <laughs> like, they're just that, or... that, that I enjoy. Or the or the one with him and Adam where they had to run through the crisscross with the balls. Choo choo! That one. Oh, they should do that one again. Yeah, that one could be pretty brutal. What? Anything I didn't touch upon? R.I.P. West. Sorry, you had to go down like that, man. You know. Um, R.I.P. Nelson. Sorry, it had to go down like that, man. Oh, just feel so <laughs> bad for Nelson. I can't believe that. But I think I, I, it, I always think it's better for Corey's game when Nelson eventually gets kicked out. Yeah. Corey does much better when he's playing for himself and he's not trying to drag Nelson along with him because let's just be honest, Nelson is not good at this game. Well, he's, he's never going to win one unless he just plays for himself at some point. Mm-hmm. But I, I do want to say, like, we're four episodes in, and this is, might be one of my favorite seasons so far. Like, it's just nonstop. The challenges have been great. Um, the drama and even the strategy. Like, usually four weeks in, it's rookies are getting knocked out one by one, and that's not how it's gone this season. 
Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'll say, too, the past two seasons, I mean, the soundtrack is pretty good. Oh, yeah. The music's been spectacular. Oh, yeah. I'm going to comment on the female side of the cast and say they could do, they need some improvement. There's three or four slots that I think could have been filled by just more, either more, just more capable competitors. Cause there's still like three or four girls in there that I'm sorry, I'm not even trying to just, they're going to be layups. Like, you know, Cam is going to have a layup if she wants it. Casey's going to have a layup if she wants, you know, and you could have brought back girls like Maddie and some of the other oh, girls yeah. that, uh, you Maddie. know, I like Maddie. Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there were some very strong girls. You don't have to bring back Jenny every season because obviously Jenny's going to win every season on the girls' side. But, like, you know, yeah, just get rid of, like, all the little Instagram fairies and, like, the little pretty dainty girls that have no business being on MTV's The Challenge. Cause Even B Big T? Big T is like is Big not T. like the rest of them. Big T is way more than the, the ones I'm referring to. Like, I'm talking about, like, Liv, who's no longer there, one of the Ambers, both of the Ambers, in fact. Um, oh, that, that little Amber's fixing to bring some drama. I can feel it now. She's fixing a snap on somebody. Hopefully she brings Devin. What about that exchange? That whole with thing with Devin was so uncomfortable. That. That's what I mean with him just like kind of being a dick. Like that was so They're... unnecessary. I agree. Was... You're ruining my night. For what? Just there sitting was, there was having more... a conversation about Big T. Also, did anybody else think that what he was asking about like where Big T originated from was like where she got the nickname from? Because I was kind of waiting for that part of the story and she never got there. And I was like, I yeah. really lost one. So that that entire conversation got edited uh, big time. Like so much was missed. There was like in thirty minutes more worth of conversation before that well, question sure. even That's got a asked. Super heavy subject for her just to like spew out and fight. And it didn't well, seem like uh, Devin and, and and Amber were really at it. So something had to no. happen that they left yeah, out. Something... All of a sudden, Devin's like, "Get out of here! I don't want to be around you. You're ruining my night." Yeah, something was left out. And that, that's one thing that irritates with me with the show is that they cut it out and then use it later down the road. But it really played a major part in why, you know, because trying to get Amber into that elimination was key to his game. And ultimately, her and Nelson were down there. So I'd, I don't know. I, I wish they would do a better job with the story. Mm hmm. I will say as an editor, it's hard to fit everything into a certain time spot. They even have a long time <laughs> spot, so I don't know. Maybe they can do a little better, though, because they do have, like, an I mean, hour they could, they could move the show to two hours. It's not like there's anything else playing on MTV. All they do is fucking ridiculousness. <laughs> I love ridiculousness, though. Oh, my God. Hanson and now ridiculousness. That's... So on that note, bye background. everybody. <laughs> Podcast over. Like having a couple of drinks, like my husband and I would like to play board games and just like you know, kids go to bed, we play a couple of games, have a couple of drinks. Ridiculousness is just like good to have on. It's it's cool. bootleg jackass. I, mean, I feel that way about Impractical Jokers. I'll have Impractical Jokers I'll have in the all the time. Jokers. <laughs> okay, that's. It was the but office, it... but they took it off Netflix. Any predictions you guys want to make before we end this? Uh, I'm One still waiting girls. for Leo and Gabby to go in. Wasn't that supposed to? Wasn't that supposed to happen like week one and it didn't? So that's got to happen at hmm. some point. One of They're the week not girls is going. Any this shit though? I see Michi and Amber going in. Yeah, Michi, and then maybe I think Josh could end up being a house vote. It should be a girls' week this week, but it could be because it, it's even numbers again. So they could throw. I mean, or go Nani down. is a great layup to go down and get. I want a, a duo week. Against. I want a duo week. Just the next challenge looks interesting. Be so predictable. The whole hanging off the side of a cliff, holding on to your partner, like that's pretty. I'm excited for it. We'll only get like three minutes worth of that challenge, but. I would love to participate in that challenge. That looks fun as hell. I don't want to participate in any of the challenges. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold you off the side. I'll go ahead and keep my lofty perch. You can, I, I got you, dog. <laughs> Let's 
What I like about the show, though, is that they're always coming up with something new and something scarier and more intense than the season before. I mean, there are repeated challenges, of course. There's repeated um, brawls. I don't know what you want to call it, down in the pit, infernos, or whatever you want to call it. But They do a great job of changing things up. Big Brother, and even Survivor needs to take note. Survivor, Big Brother. I mean, all the challenges are repeated. If you knew you were going to be on Survivor, I'd spend hours holding a pot over my head just to like strengthen my arms because you know you're gonna have to do it you know if nick Nick ever asked me to go on another season of his shows if you think i ain't practicing helicopter you out of your right it's hard to switch it's hard to switch challenges like timing myself (laughs) (laughs) i'm online i'm online so it's harder to fucking find challenges when you're doing it online oh man you ain't practicing trying I wish the I challenge would incorporate something where kind of like sequester does. And I even, I think every competition show should have a season where the person who gets sent into elimination can pick whoever the fuck they want. Because I think if the challenge did some shit like that, it would make things very spicy when whoever got sent down into the pit, got to just look at that row of people and go, you, you, like, you that's like the that's the prequel to the next rivals if they ever did that is that you're creating so much beef by going on that route thank you for joining me for this uh, <laughs> podcast of the challenge episodes three and four <laughs>